Hello and welcome to another Tech Bytes video. My name is Shodik Rafiq and today I'll be showing you how to set up a CMG cluster. You might be asking who this video is for. Well, if you're someone who have spare computers, whether that be a laptop or a PC, basically any spare computational resource um, besides your main working PC, and they have valid CMG software licenses, and also if you wish to link these computers together to create a simple compute cluster for your CMG simulation runs, then this is the video for you. Um, before that, I'll go over what is a CMG cluster. Well, a CMG cluster may be comprised of either a high-performance dedicated computer such as shown here, or normal desktop computers or laptops that uh, individual users may have. How you configure your cluster depends on what resources you have available and what demands you want to place on them. In the ex example below, you will see that, let's say this is my working PC. I have a working PC that uh, doesn't have many cores, but I also have a spare des desktop PC, or it may not even be spare, it's also a working PC, but it's in my office. Or I have HPC and I want to be able to even though I build my models in my working PC, I want to be able to submit my runs to other PCs to make use of the greater computational power. This is the purpose of a CMG cluster. So how does it work? Well, CMG Launcher has the ability to forward jobs from a client computer to another computer for processing. You can easily set up a cluster of Windows computers to run jobs from any client computer, even if you do not have uh, schedulers such as Microsoft HPC or an IBM platform LSF. And this is what I'll show you today through several demos. And um, any computer can actually be set up as a compute node in a CMG cluster, as long as it has launcher and CMG software installed. A compute node will run jobs that have been submitted from either that same computer or another computer in the cluster. You can also designate one or more computers in the cluster as being a head node. A head node is simply the first uh, computer or node that the job will be submitted to and it has the power to distribute the uh, simulations to available computers based on their uh, available CPUs. So before that, there are some important prerequisites. Um, the, all the computers that you wish to link in the CMG cluster should have CMG software installed um, and should have valid licenses. This should not be a problem if they are all connected to the same uh, network license, for example. And also the computers have to be on the same Windows domain, that is the same network that is controlled by a, by a domain. The reason for that is because the Windows domain will help for authentication of users um, as you pass data across uh, these computers. Also, of course, all the data sets uh, will be, have to be stored in a shared network folder. That is, it's a folder that is accessible by all the computers involved in this cluster. So for the first setup, I will be showing you, um, I have access to two PCs. One is a I will call the working PC, it has 16 cores, and I will link it to a spare desktop PC that has 40 cores. And the scenario that I wish to set up is something like this. I, I'll be using this working PC to build my models and visualize my results, but I'd rather submit my runs to another PC completely because um, let's say I do not have uh, enough computing powers or because uh, all my computing powers are used for other simulation runs. So I wish to direct all of the, the additional simulation runs that I'm going to make into this spare desktop PC. So this spare desktop PC will be used to run simulations and it will act as both a compute node and a head node at the same time because it will be the one to receive the job and run the job. So let's set that up. So here I am now on the spare desktop. I'm controlling the spare desktop computer. And as you can see, I've uh, already opened launcher. So the first thing I'd want to do is go to configuration, configure local job server, and tick the use job service to submit any jobs. And then just press OK because that will require launcher to restart. So 
that closes launcher, just reopen it. You will see this message cannot connect with CMG job scheduler service. Um, what you'll need to do is search for services in your computer, which I've already opened here. And basically you can search for in the search bar. And what you'd want to do is basically change the properties of the CMG job service to automatic and also uh, to start it. So press apply first and press start. After you have done that, go back to launcher and click on retry. Now that it, it has connected with the job service, go to configuration and go again to configure local job server. This time, um, you want to make sure that you click on the second option, which is this computer is a CMG cluster head node, and make sure that you tick that include this computer as a compute node. So I've already done that before, and that's why it had automatically chosen these options. Um, so press OK, and another thing you have to do is input your Windows password for launcher to store. So I will just put here the same Windows password, and that is basically it. Just double check your local job server, make sure these two are ticked, and you should be good to go for the spare desktop. Now let's go to the other PC. Here I'm controlling the other PC from which I want to submit my jobs from. Go to configuration and go to configure remote schedulers, add a new scheduler, a CMG scheduler, and you can name this anything you'd like, but I'll just name it as spare. The important thing here is to make sure you input uh, the name of the computer that we just changed, the spare computer, as the head node name, because we just assigned that as the head node. So here I'm pasting it and I'll proceed to edit advanced options. And here, the important thing is to write your domain name, the name of your Windows domain, as well as your username. So what I'll do is I'll go inet slash shodik. And when I press finish, it will ask me for my credentials, similar to how uh, I needed credentials in the other computer. So I'll just enter it here. And as you can see, I've already created a remote scheduler that points to that other computer, KL, SKLS, uh, SKL2S. So now that we've done that, we can test this by trying to submit a job. So I'll drag and drop this model one onto here. And I will click on, make sure I submit to the spare scheduler here. This is the important thing. You can run it in turbo mode if you want. I'll just uncheck turbo mode for now. And uh, make sure you choose uh, a number of processors that uh, will make use of its power. So here I'll just go with 16. So once you've done that, it will be waiting to submit. And one thing that you might want to do is you might want to add some job columns to help you identify what is the computer or the node that that job is being executed at, which is called the exit node. So I will just put this up. And I also want to add the number of processors so that I can see how much processors I'm actually submitting my jobs with. So once I press OK, um, I can now go over to the other computer which I have submitted job to job to, and you can see it's running. And I can basically just right click and view the log file. And you can do the same thing on the job, on the computer on which you have submitted it. So now I'm back to the working PC and you can see it's showing me the log file. But actually what's important to note is that uh, the exec node, if I refresh this, is showing me that it's actually being executed in 
KLSKLS2, not on this computer, is, which is called Malaysia WC1-1. So this run will take only 50 seconds to run, but uh, I, I want to point out a few things. Um, the first thing that I want to point out is that um, this is now configured with two uh, job servers. So right now, when I drag and drop my model onto IMAX, I had two options, basically. I had the option of local, which would submit the jobs locally to the local job scheduler, which is this computer, which has 16 cores, or I can choose to go for the spare. And this is where, where you have to choose to go for the remote scheduler. Now, as you can see, the job has finished. And in the log file, you will also notice that um, it is run on this host computer. And at the top, you will see that um, the sub it, will, it is actually submitted on um, this computer. So that's it for the first part. Now I want to show you the second setup, which is a variation from the first setup, um, in which I want to utilize both the cores of the working PC as well as the spare desktop PC. So what that will give me in total is a combined power of 56 cores. So what that means is that I will be setting this PC as my head node and will be setting this as the compute node under it. And I will submit jobs to this PC as a head node, which can then distribute the jobs to either the spare desktop PC or the working PC. Let me show you that. Here I am back on the spare desktop PC, as I call it. And now I'd like to change the configuration from the second option to the third option, which will make this PC simply a compute node, which will receive jobs from the head node, which is the working PC. The name of the working PC is already entered here because I've, again, I've done this before, so it's saved the setting. Uh, but if you'd want to enter another name, just you can simply enter it. So with this, I'll just press OK. And now I'll go over to the, to my working PC. And this time I'll have to do a few things. First thing I wanna just, um, for clarity's sake, remove the remote scheduler that I made. And to set up the second scenario, I'll go to configure local job server. And this time I'll have to do the same thing as I did on the uh, spare PC, which is first use job service to submit any jobs, press OK, which will restart launcher. And once you reopen launcher, it won't be able to detect because you will have to change from the default setting of manual to automatic. Press apply, press start, press OK, go back to launcher and retry. Now go back to configuration and this time we will select this computer is a CMG cluster head node and we will select it as also a compute node similar to the first scenario, but this time we will add a child node or basically a compute node under it. Um, and here I'll enter the name of KLSKLS2, just like that, and press OK. And that's it. That's how you set up the second scenario where you'll have basically one, one scheduler which has both computers under its control. And to prove that, I'm going to select all three models here simultaneously and submit it to IMAX, as you can see here, all three models. And this time I'll choose the cluster that I just made and I'll submit it. Keep in mind that that other computer, the spare uh, computer, uh, has 40 cores and this computer has 16 cores. By submitting three jobs with 16 cores each, I will basically use up, 
use up 32 of the 40 cores in the spare computer and that will leave only eight cores which is not enough so it will submit that third job model three it should submit that third job in this computer which is malaysia wcc 1-1 as you can see that's exactly what happens and again similar to the first time around you can always view the log file and see the jobs as they're running they're all running simultaneously um, it just takes a, a few a few uh, to a few seconds to update but if you go to the other computer you will see that it's already running actually so you can always go to the other computer and double check make sure that it's already running it just takes a while but because this third run is running on this computer it's um, the update is much more responsive and so another thing that i want to show here um, as a test case is i'm just going to go back to the other computer just now that these runs are complete I click refresh something that i can play with is again keep in mind that this is the spare uh, desktop pc i can configure my local job server and set this as for example um, if i want it's 10 because the reason why i do this is maybe this this spare desktop is actually not mine but my colleagues and maybe you know um he's an he's a fellow R, a reservoir engineer but he's not currently using all of his cores so you know he says okay i can lend you 10 cores which is good enough right so if you use all that will use 40 but now i've changed it to 10 and i've just pressed okay and now let me show you what happens when i run a job um it will only make use of 10 cores now back on this working pc i will resubmit two of these models into imax and again, I choose the Malaysia cluster, and this time I'll choose eight. And what this should show me is that it should submit one of the jobs in the spare desktop, which has 10 um, processors free allocated to it. And it should submit, as you can see here, yep, as you can see here, it's the other one is being run on KL SKLS2 model one using eight cores. And the reason why the second run couldn't go through is because of course now there's only 10 available cores instead of 40. And now both are complete. This is the second scenario uh, done. Going back to the slides, just to show the third setup, which is actually a very quick one. Now that we've we've have this um, scheduler that is uh, under the control of this working PC and it has a combined power 56 cores, I can actually link another computer to this to make use of it. So this is what the third setup looks like. So I will go to another PC, uh, which will be the PC that I'll be working on that I use to build models and visualize results. But because let's say it's a laptop and it has only four cores, I will utilize uh, the computing power of this scheduler instead. So how do I do that? Let's go to the third computer. So in here, what I'd want to do is go to configure remote schedulers. Again, similar to the last time, add a CMG scheduler. Name this as 56 core. And of course, uh, the head node has to be the name of the working computer, which is now the head node. So I put here Malaysia-1-1. Uh, one, one one, and again, I go as inet slash shodik and finish. And that's it. Now I'm, I have this uh, scheduler available for me to submit uh, jobs into. Thank you for watching this Tech Bytes video. I hope you benefited from it.